would depend totally on their effectiveness. The 6,000 aircraft ready for the assault would be unable to play their part in the initial bombardment. The decision to bring forward the date of the attack had virtually guaranteed they would be grounded by bad weather. In the critical sector of the front, facing Konyev's forces on the Vistula, the Germans had created a tactical defense zone 10 miles deep. Inside it, on Hitler's direct orders, substantial reserves had been deployed, including two panzer and two motorized divisions. What the waiting Germans did not know was that the Soviet artillery plan was designed to annihilate everything inside the zone. At 5 a.m. on the morning of January the 12th, 1945, Konyev loosed his opening barrage. Reconnaissance units were pushed forward, hard in the wake of the falling shells. After a brief pause, the guns opened up once more, and this time, the barrage lasted one hour and 47 minutes. Its effect on the defenders was shattering. Konyev's attack was launched from a bridgehead 40 miles wide near Sandomierz. Standing in the path of his first Ukrainian were the German 4th Panzer Army and part of the 17th Army. The assault broke through German lines on a front 25 miles wide, annihilating 4th Panzer. By January the 25th, Konyev had reached the river Oder. To the north, 2nd and 3rd Belo-Russian fronts were poised to strike at the German 3rd Panzer, 4th Army, and part of the 2nd Army, defending East Prussia. The Soviets attacked on January the 13th, but faced with difficult, marshy terrain, they advanced only slowly, not reaching the Baltic until January the 26th. Meanwhile, in the center, Marshal Zhukov's first Belarusian front launched its attack on January the 14th. Zhukov smashed through the German defenses with such force that within three days he had taken Warsaw. By the 26th, the fortress city of Poznan was cut off and the German front had virtually disintegrated. By January the 31st, forward elements of 1st Belo-Russian had penetrated to the middle reaches of the Oder, only 40 miles from Berlin. Four days after the Russian onslaught had begun, Adolf Hitler had moved his headquarters to Berlin, where a bunker had been built beneath the Reichschancellery. From there, he issued a stream of detailed instructions to his field commanders and failing utterly to comprehend the magnitude of the blow that had fallen on his armies, his intervention served only to make a disastrous situation catastrophic. One of his first acts had been to order the crack Gross Deutschland Panzer Corps to move 150 miles south from East Prussia to an area that had already been taken by the Soviets. the Corps was forced to retreat long before it reached its destination. On January the 27th and 28th, German forces in the east were granted a temporary respite when fierce blizzards swept across eastern and central Europe. In appalling conditions, the Soviet offensive wavered, and when there was a sudden thaw on the 31st, 
the Luftwaffe found itself for the first time since the offensive had begun with the edge over the enemy. The German aerodromes around Berlin were hard surfaced while the grass fields of the Red Air Force were now a quagmire. In two days, the Luftwaffe flew 5,000 sorties, smashing supply columns and making movement almost impossible. In spite of relentless German air attacks, the Russians had succeeded in seizing several bridgeheads over the Oder. Marshal Zhukov quickly ordered his forces to replenish their supplies and in a swift assault take the German capital on February the 15th. The plan was hopelessly ambitious. After a 300 mile advance, the fuel situation had become critical. Bitter German resistance had cost large numbers of casualties and just as serious Amongst many Russian formations, discipline had all but collapsed. For vast numbers of Red Army soldiers unleashed on German territory, rape and plunder had become vastly more attractive than fighting. To compound Zhukov's problems, 1st Belorussian's northern flank was now dangerously exposed. The threat to Zhukov's flank was soon dramatically underlined. After a series of increasingly dangerous probing attacks, the German 3rd Panzer Army slammed into Zhukov's line. At first, 3rd Panzer made rapid progress, but on February the 17th, its commander, General Wenck, was seriously injured in a road accident. Without its leader, the German attack lost all momentum and finally petered out. Although unsuccessful, 3rd Panzer's counter-attack had an effect out of all proportion to the damage it inflicted. To Marshal Zhukov, it was clear proof that his flank must be secured before the drive to Berlin could be resumed. By now, German resistance all along the Oder line had stiffened immeasurably. The Western defences had been virtually stripped to put every possible man and weapon between the Russians and the capital. An enemy thrust to Berlin was expected almost any day. What the Germans did not anticipate was that Zhukov would strike to the north. Russian operations to clear the northern flank began on March the 1st. Within five days, Zhukov had pushed deep into Pomerania and had taken Kolberg. By the end of the month, Rokossovsky's second Belorussian had taken Danzig. To the east, third Belorussian destroyed the last German pocket in East Prussia, although the fortress city of Königsberg would remain in German hands for some time. On the southern flank, Marshal Konyev's first Ukrainian front had launched its offensive on February the 8th and had quickly reached the river Nysa. Breslau was left encircled and Konyev's line had been pushed to lie abreast of Zhukov's, posing a dangerous threat to Berlin from the south. Marshal Konyev's offensive had driven the Germans out of the valuable industrial area of Silesia and most of its mines and factories had been captured intact. Adolf Hitler was now determined 
that nothing else of value should fall into Russian hands. In the Ukraine and Poland, everything of use to the enemy had been destroyed in the wake of the retreating Germans, leaving behind a trail of devastation. The policy was now to be carried out in the fatherland itself. Hitler insisted that because the best of the German people would have fallen in battle, the only ones left would be those who were inferior, and their needs were irrelevant. Not a bridge, factory, railway or food store was to be left intact. beginning of April, with the Soviet campaigns in Silesia and Pomerania effectively over, the Red Army embarked on its fastest redeployment of the entire war. Every available man, gun, tank and shell was rushed to the oder neisse front for the offensive that would take the Red Army into the heart of Hitler's capital. The logistics were of awesome complexity. On Zhukov's front, the last German stronghold threatening the Soviet bridgehead at Kustrin had been overrun, and 40 engineer battalions had been toiling night and day to build 25 bridges over the Oder, two bridges for every mile and a half of front. Zhukov's bridgeheads, of which Kustrin was the biggest, were the most valuable assets the Red Army possessed. Elsewhere, the rivers Nysa and Oder would have to be crossed by boat or by bridges built under enemy fire. But at Kustrin, the door to Berlin had already been prized open. The concentration of forces for the final offensive surpassed anything yet seen in the history of warfare. Two and a half million men, nearly 45,000 guns and rocket launchers, and 6,250 tanks were packed behind a front only 250 miles long. Zhukov alone was massing seven million tons of artillery ammunition for his initial blow. First Belorussian was to launch its drive on a broad front, but striking hardest from its two bridgeheads north and south of Frankfurt. Under the direct operational control of Marshal Zhukov, first Belorussian had 77 divisions in 11 armies, six field armies, a guards army, two shock armies, and two guards tank armies. Zhukov could also call on the 16th and 18th air armies for coordinated air ground operations. Zhukov's attack would be launched on April the 16th. On Zhukov's right flank, 2nd Belorussian front was to attack west and north, securing the main Berlin operation. Commanded by General Konstantin Rokossovsky, 2nd Belorussian had three field armies, a shock army, and a guards tank army. They would be supported by the 4th Air Army. Rokossovsky would attack on April the 18th. The 1st Ukrainian Front was to destroy enemy forces south of Berlin. 1st Ukrainian was commanded by Marshal Ivan Konyev. Zhukov's greatest rival. Konyev had three field armies, two guards armies, and two tank armies for his initial thrust, with two more field armies from 3rd Belarusian as reinforcements. However, these would not be in place in time for the start of operations on April the 16th. For support, Konyev could call on the 2nd Air Army. 